much of what we know about Ramadan and fasting is from what we've read in books, maybe lectures we've heard, things we've learned from our parents and all that is good. But how many subhanAllah know what Ramadan is said to be from the perspective of the Quran? And what is amazing subhanAllah is that there's actually only one place you need to look in the Quran to see and read what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to say about it. And that is in sur- inside Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 18204 to about 187. So like five verses, that's all. Even though fasting on Ramadan is a pillar from the five pillars of Islam, that is all that is said about Ramadan inside the Quran. But what is said, subhanAllah, is very meaningful, very beautiful, and is full of benefit and guidance. So let us look at the verse, one of those verses, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykumu siyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Believers, fasting was prescribed upon you just like it was those before you so that perhaps or in order to allow you to attain something called taqwa. This verse has so many lessons inside of it. I know you've heard it before, but listen to what the scholars of tafsir like Ibn Uthaymin and Ibn Ashur said about this verse. Really, subhanAllah, it is remarkable. First of all, this verse is going to instruct the Muslim Ummah to fast the month of Ramadan. It is going to tell us that fasting is not something good to have been done, but rather something which is obliged upon us. But the verse begins by making a call. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, believers, Allah calls upon us by way of our faith, Iman. Those that have believed in Allah, you are the ones Allah is speaking to. May Allah make us from those people. As if to say, what is going to follow the command to fast is something to do with Iman and nothing else. And you know that's something to reflect over because sometimes people can fast for different reasons, right? Some people can fast subhanAllah to lose weight. Some people can fast to save money. Or some people can fast subhanAllah to show off. Rather fasting is something from our faith. And it, it is an expression of our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are willing, O oh Allah, out of our faith in you to fast the month of Ramadan for your sake. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, that fasting kutiba alaykum usiyah, that fasting has been mandated upon you just like it was on those before you. I've always wondered about why or oh why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say fasting is being prescribed on you just like it was on those before you. What does our fasting have to do with those that came before us? There's a number of things. First of all, it is teaching us subhanAllah that fasting is so beloved to Allah that he not only prescribed it for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but for the Ummah that came even before him. That Allah has always loved fasting. And we are like continuing on that legacy of fasting and it was given to those before us. So some said, for example, that it was Musa alayhi salam, the first of the prophets to be commanded to, be, to fast. And their fast was just one day. It was a 24 hour fast in the ninth month of their calendar. But subhanAllah, our fasting, though it is fasting like their fasting, it is done for a whole month. And in that, there's a number of lessons. First of all, when you hear that people before us used to fast, it kind of makes it easy on us to fast, isn't it? I mean, if you're told to do something challenging and fasting the month of Ramadan, the month of Ramadan in the summer, when it's very hot and the days are long, it's difficult. But when you hear, hang on a minute, people came before us many hundreds of years ago, and they also had to fast. Can we not also do that? Yes, we can. And secondly, it instills a sense of competition. How so? Well, those that came before us also fasted, but our fasting is different. Their fasting was just one day. See that when the Arabs, when they were living in the time of the Prophet, they knew of fasting from the Yahud. They knew that the Jews used to fast that one day, the Ashura day. But then they were told to fast one month. Because we, the followers of Muhammad are supposed to be the greatest worshippers of Allah. We're supposed to outdo any other people in that which Allah loves. So when we fast the month of Ramadan, it is our way of showing the world that we are the best servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we compete in the best things and we outdo others as well. This is subhanAllah, some of the benefits behind Allah telling us that you're supposed to fast like those that were commanded to fast before you. 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the reason why He wanted us to fast. Is it just the case that we're supposed to go hungry and thirsty just because of the sake of it? Or is there something more to that? Is there a higher objective behind this? Some people will end up achieving from fasting what they're supposed to and others will not. What is it that they're supposed to attain? Something called taqwa. Now very simply, my brothers and sisters, fasting is supposed to make you a muttaqi. And someone who is a muttaqi has taqwa. And taqwa means to be aware of your desires such that you hold back on them for the sake of Allah to avoid His punishment. Again, you see, impulse comes to every single one of us. Every one of us have thoughts come into our mind to do things which we know we shouldn't do. Some of us, however, don't act on those impulses. Others, subhanAllah, they do. May Allah forgive us our sins. Those of us that can hold back on the impulse are those of us who have taqwa. And what will allow you to increase in your inhibition to hold back on impulse, that is fasting. This is the link between fasting and taqwa. That when we fast, we enter a spiritual state which helps us to improve on our sense of inhibition to do those things which we know we shouldn't be doing.